Hi guys, my name is Courtney and today I'm going to be doing a review of In Other Lands by Sarah Reese Brennan. In Other Lands, how to describe this novel. In Other Lands is a portal fantasy world about a young boy named Elliot who at 13 is taken to this field. He can see this magical wall which on the other side of is a magical world with magical creatures and he decides yeah I am going to skip out on regular school and go to magic combat school. Once they're in that magical land he decides that he's going to devote himself to this beautiful elf girl. He decides that he's going to skip out on combat training because he's a pacifist and he decides that he hates Luke Sunborn who is the obvious chosen one and so annoying. From there we get a slow progression through the different years of his life from 13 to 17 and in a lot of ways it's a little bit plotless but it more than makes up with that for the characters themselves and their personal growth over the years. This book starts off feeling like a warm fuzzy middle grade that reminded me of so many fantasy books that I read when I was in middle school and then it slowly grows into a YA book but the thing that makes this book special is the humor one the banter between the characters two the character growth is so amazing and their internal personal struggles is just amazing which we will talk about and then third this book is not really a parody not really a satire it's definitely a love letter to this kind of fiction but it also kind of spins the tropes on their heads and it makes a really big commentary on it Elliot our main character is the typical kind of character that would not be the main character he is cunning he is not against being rude or mean to people he definitely has his own priorities and he's a little bit self-centered and selfish in like the best way possible and I love Elliot he is hilarious he is so funny the things that he says and does are just so out of pocket and his growth throughout the book of him learning you know how to be a good friend how to be a good person but also staying true to who he is is just so amazing I loved seeing him be cunning and kind of you know make things happen in the way he wanted to he was so against war and his way to find peace was very different than what the world wanted and he kept fighting for the things that he wanted in the way that he wanted them and he just stuck to his guns and it was so amazing but he was also able to have this great character depth and growth his whole big like internal struggle is that he's always like the second choice he's never loved first kind of a thing and I'm a big sucker for that kind of character trope and yeah I just I loved him I loved him oh my god he's oblivious and awkward and charming he somehow has everybody wrapped around his finger and also like doesn't have anybody that he feels like is putting him first and just like oh my god I I can't even describe how much I love Elliot and just having him at the center of this novel just really transformed this novel one into just such a fun ride but it also him being the center just was able to tip so many things that we normally see in fantasy books on their head and just make it so funny and ridiculous. This book and Elliot was able to point out so many things that are kind of weird about fantasy and this book just makes so many critiques through Elliot about children's fantasy and I loved that aspect of it. If you want a book that explores like the chosen one trope, if you want a book that kind of deconstructs those things and fantasy tropes, this is for you. But again, this book is about the characters, it's about their internal growths, and it's also about their inner dynamics. So the other two main characters you have are Luke Sunborn and Serene Hart in the Chaos of Battle, which is the elf that Elliot falls in love with, and so it's all of their personal friendships and dynamics. Serene is like this misandrist elf who in elf customs men are the lesser beings, and so she has to deal with that, getting over her prejudiced ways about how she views men as weaker. And then we have Luke Sunborn, chosen perfect golden boy, who in the inside is just a soft shy boy and he, you know, doesn't want all this attention. And the only attention that he really wants is Elliot's. As this book goes from like middle grade book to a, a YA book, it's just so fun to like see the characters discover themselves. Elliot is bisexual and I loved Elliot's like sexual awakening journey because he was like allowed to make mistakes with relationships, he was allowed to have bad relationships 
he had the wrong relationships, he was allowed to fall in and out of love with different people and to have like sexual relationships with like no caveats of love either. That was just so special and different just to see Elliot allowed to have bad dating like every other teen and for him to make mistakes and for him to have different relationships outside of this main trio, for him to connect and have different friendships. This book had like so many character dynamics, so many different character interactions and it was just so fun to read. The one section of this book that I didn't love as much is that between 15, 16, and 17, Elliot is kind of figuring himself out. He goes like on a backpacking trip and the year before the backpacking trip, he goes back home to England and he kind of decides to have a relationship with an older 21 year old when he's just turning 16. I understand why that relationship happened. The book eventually commented on that relationship and one, why it was kind of toxic and also why that person would want to be with Elliot in the first place, you know, for manipulative reasons. And like, so I understand Elliot's personal journey of what he went on. I also, like, I don't know if this book needed to have that, you know, relationship of a minor with an adult. I feel like this book could have done the same things with the character as a 17, 18 or maybe 19 year old about those kind of toxic manipulative relationships. While it's not my favorite choice for the novel, I do understand what it did for the book and for Elliot. And the other thing that I wanted more of was just more. I just wanted more book. I wanted more of Elliot and Luke. I wanted more of the end plot. I wanted more of that romance at the end. I wanted just more of Elliot being a little annoying shit and getting shit done. And I wanted more of the world. I wanted to see what happened next. If we got a book about them in their like late 20s, you know, about them doing their business, I would love that. Honestly, I would love that. I would love more of this. I'm trying to describe this book and explain what it is so badly, but in so many ways it's so hard. But I think the heart of this book is that it's about the characters. It's about their interactions, about their dynamics, it's about their growth, and if you love character-driven books, you're going to love this. This book plays around with tropes, and there's this element or nod to fantasy tropes, to fanfiction tropes, but it also spins them in so many different ways that is so fun and refreshing. But it also just does so many unexpected things that is just so fun to read about. And so while there isn't like this giant overarching plot, it felt complete, it felt whole, it didn't feel like there wasn't something missing. And the only thing that this book made me think at the end was that I wanted more of this book and I want more books like this. I want fantasy books that have high personal stakes but that don't have high world stakes, if that makes sense. I want more fantasy books that are allowed to be their own thing, that are allowed to not be this big epic battle thing. I want more fantasy books that take place in a magical world where the characters can't actually do sorcery. Honestly, I love that. I kind of want to see Elliot with a wand because him doing magic would be absolutely hilarious, but in a lot of ways I loved how this book was so divorced from like typical sword and sorcery stuff. And at the end of the day, this is one of my favorite books that I've read this year so far and it is so good and not enough people are talking about it. Not enough people know about this book, to be honest. There is a pretty good cult following because there's like 89 fan fictions on AO3, which is it's pretty good for a book, honestly. Maybe it's more popular in Ireland, which is where the author's from. I'm not sure, but I want more people to read this because I loved it and I just, I loved it. I, I loved it. I loved it. As far as like the book that it reminded me of the most, the book that came to mind was the Septimus Heap series. Like this book definitely plays across a lot of different tropes that we see in fantasy books, but the Septimus Heap series is one series that I hold pretty highly and dearly to my heart. It's very playful, very whimsical, very magical. This book definitely like wasn't referencing that book, it wasn't making a direct commentary, but just something about this book really reminded me of the Septimus Heap series, if that makes sense. So if you also have fond feelings of that series, maybe look into this one. But yeah, this is like one of the best, most refreshing YA books that I've read in a while and I want other people to know about it. So thank you so much for watching me ramble and rave about this book. Go read it now. But thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys later and happy reading.